Welcome to PlatformCon. I'm Arthur Siddiqui, and thank you for attending the session on designing Cloud DMZ. According to Verizon's data breach investigation report from last year, the number one attack vector in both incidents and data breaches was web application hacking. This annual report published by Verizon was a joint collaboration with 87 partners. It analyzed over 900,000 incidents and over 200,000 data breaches across the globe. The analysis further showed that the two dominant patterns in the incidents were denial of service and basic web application attacks. These data points only serve to reinforce the importance of secure architecture. When it comes to customer facing application, the design needs to be hardened with the attack services reduced as much as possible. The stakes are even higher when dealing with regulatory or restricted data. DMZ has been a well accepted industry practice as one way to solve it. As Wikipedia concisely explains it, Demonetized Zone or DMZ is a network that exposes organizations' internet facing resources. Consider an application that is internet facing with a traditional three layer stack a web tier, app layer, and data store. Such an application should be split over two network segments. The reason is because the stack has two distinct portions a web tier that is internet facing versus app layer and data store that will be placed on the organization's intranet. This untrusted network in which the web tier resides is the DMZ. When it comes to envisioning DMZ design, one of the popular industry practices has been the sandwich approach. External firewalls on the outside perimeter and internal firewalls separating untrusted from the trusted network. I should start by stating the obvious that this is not a comprehensive list. Having said that, when thinking about the holistic design, there are multiple facets to consider. Let us start with the denial of service protection because going back to that investigation report, DDoS was identified as a number one action variety when it comes to incidents. The next one is web application firewall for layer seven protection. Example against SQL injection, cross-site scripting attack, attacks, etc. While WAF rules can be set up in either rate limiting or blocking mode, target states should be to utilize the blocking mode. There's a popular online community, Open Worldwide Application Security Project or OAS that maintains a top, list, top 10 list for the most critical security risks to web applications. Next one is layer four protection. As discussed in the previous slide, Network firewalls can be used for layer 4 defense that can perform stateful inspection of traffic. To achieve deep packet inspection, SSL certificate can also be uploaded on these firewalls. This enables firewalls to perform decryption and re-encryption as part of the deep packet inspection requirement. Content Delivery Network or CDN is another key ingredient in the design. Aside from the caching benefits through the edge locations, CDN vendors have become sophisticated in terms of offering add-ons such as DDoS mitigation and web application firewall services. It provides the significant benefit of protection being in place even before traffic hits the application front end. In such a setup, application front end, in this case, the load balancer should be locked to CDN, thereby ensuring that the load balancer will only forward traffic that it receives directly from CDN. While I've talked about design principles and capabilities in a cloud agnostic manner, the last item in this list is, is exclusive to AWS. Gateway Load Balancer or GWLB has a niche purpose. It was released specifically for use with third party appliances and can sit in front of network firewalls, intrusion detection systems, and intrusion prevention systems. This load balancer is a combination of a layer three gateway and layer four load balancer capabilities, which makes it a transparent bump in the wire appliance. 
Distillation of these considerations results in this high-level design that has a suite of controls incorporated. DDoS protection happening at the edge location. VAF setup not just monitor but blocking mode using OAS top 10 rule set. Application front end and back end segmented into separate virtual private clouds or VPCs. It should be pointed out that while this design uses ALB as a front end, it could just as easily have been an API gateway. Let's build on, on this design and go a level deeper. I realize this is a busy diagram, therefore I'll make it a point to explain it in detail. Left hand side represents the application account hosting internet facing application. It uses multi VPC account approach because it allows it to isolate untrusted from the trusted network through the use of VPCs. Internet gateway has therefore been attached to the VPC which is hosting the untrusted network as is the only VPC that needs to allow ingress traffic. On the right hand side is an inspection account which caters to centralized inspection model. A popular deployment model in enterprise is to have a dedicated set of firewalls for north-south and east-west traffic patterns. North-south traffic is defined as traffic coming in and out of the data center, in this case, our AWS account ecosystem. East-west traffic is defined as traffic that stays within the data center. Uh, example, inner VPC traffic, uh, in this case, within the application account. The sequence numbers in orange have been added to illustrate the path that traffic takes when coming in from the internet. The first layer is a CDN, in this case, Amazon's CloudFront service. Their CDN out of the box offers DDoS protection via the service called AWS Shield. AWS VAP has also been added to get the layer 7 protection up front. Traffic that enters the VPC via Internet Gateway is denoted by sequence number 2. There is a specific VPC routing primitive being used called VPC Ingress Routing. This primitive allows control where traffic from the internet gets directed to. In this design, target is a network interface for the gateway load balancer endpoint shown here as GWLBE in public subnet in green. This endpoint follows traffic to GWLB in the inspection account. This cross VPC communication denoted by sequence number four is set up over AWS private link which is a point-to-point -point connection using the AWS hyperplane. With GWLB fronting the firewalls, traffic is inspected by them before it goes back to the application account VPC arriving at the ALB. I should highlight that even though the ALB is, is internet facing, it actually sits in a private subnet, whereas GWLBE is the only resource hosted in the public subnet. This is to reiterate the fact that only GWLBE has a path from and to the internet. From ALB, traffic traverses to the web tier before it does another cross VPC communication to the app layer denoted by sequence number 10. This cross VPC communication is set up over transit gateway which operates at layer three. Routing between the two VPCs can be achieved through a combination of VPC and transit gateway route tables. In addition, this VPC traffic is inspected by the east-west firewalls in the inspection account. To keep the diagram simple, I only highlighted on the right-hand side legend that traffic between application front-end and back-end is getting inspected by the east-west firewalls. Every year, threat reports are published that analyze cybersecurity incidents for the year. They reinforce the reality and prevalence of cyber threats and a perpetual reminder 
how paramount security posture is. In a world where it seems like security incidents and breaches are unceasing, this hopefully has given you a good flavor how to think through a DMZ design. Thank you all.